Hey, Mr. Robert. Hey, Mr. Stack. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Um, but let me tell you, I'm a little in the red. Can I tell you why? Yeah, please tell me. Okay, so you know my new dog, Goody, right? Yeah, cutie. Okay, so Goody has been really tricky to feed. Um, he's kind of picky about his food. So I've been portioning out his meals every day. Okay. And I've been putting 65 pieces of dog food in these little bags just to have his food ready to go. Super. Well, sneaky Goody, he snuck into his food pantry and he ate some of the food in one of his bags. Before you put it out. Before I even put it out, he snuck into that pantry. All right. Um, now, he's so picky, Mr. Robert, that he didn't eat all his food. He actually left six pieces of food behind. So this actually could be kind of a good thing because it could kind of tell me how much food he's wanting to eat so I can set the right amount of food out for him every single day. If you can um, figure that out. Yeah, it's kind of a tricky problem. Do you think you could help me solve it? I'd love to. Perfect. Okay, so Mr. Robert, there were 65 pieces of dog food in one bag, yep. and he ate some of it. Goody ate some of his dog food, but there were six pieces of dog food left. I need to figure out how many pieces of dog food Goody ate. So to do this, I'm going to start with a number sentence. 65, which is how much dog food, Mr. Not Mr. Excuse me. How much dog food he started with? He ate some of it. We don't know how much yet, so I'll put a question mark there. Right. That's what we're figuring out. That's what we're trying to figure out. And we ended up with six leftover pieces of dog food. So, Mr. Robert, I was wondering if maybe we could use number lines today to help us solve this problem. Um, how would you solve for this missing number here? Well, if I'm going to use the number line, the easiest way for me is to subtract by tens. Sure. OK. What number would you start at? Well, I'm going to start at 65 because that's how many there was to start out with. Sure. And then I'm going to take away 10. So going back on the number line, that would get me to 55. Um, so I'm going to subtract another 10, going back to 45. Subtract another 10 to 35. I'll subtract another 10 to 25. Okay. Subtract another 10 to 15. And Mr. Robert, do you mind if we stop right there? Because I'm noticing as you're subtracting by tens mm -hmm. that the value in your ones place is staying the same and the value in your tens place is going down by one each digit. So. Right. We've gone down to 15, and I know if you took away 10 more, you're going to land on five, but Goody had six pieces of food left over. So then I think from this point, I'm going to subtract by ones. Okay, sure. Until Let's I get to six. Okay, until you get to six. Yeah. So we're at 15, one less would be 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. All right, so we've landed on six which is how much food was left over. So now we just need to count all those jumps, those jumps yeah. of 10 and the jumps of ones. Got it. Well, I'm looking at all these jumps of one, and it looks like you made one, two, three. You made nine jumps of one here. Mm -hmm. Back by nine. So, Mr. Robert, how much did you jump by, or how much did you jump back by altogether? Uh, it would be 59. 59, OK. So we made 59 jumps back here. You're saying Goody ate 59 pieces of food. Yep. Interesting. Um, Mr. Robert, can I tell you, I think I would do a really similar strategy. Uh -huh. um, but can I show you what I had in mind? Please do. OK, so I love how you made these jumps of 10 back. You made five jumps of 10 back. And I know that if I start at 65 and if I jump back five tens, that's the same as jumping back 50. Well, that's true. So let's jump back 50. And you landed on 15 when we did that. Now, we talked about how we would overshoot five if we jump back 10 more. But that's kind of OK. And let me explain why. So I'm going to jump back 10 more. And this is going to take me to the number five. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be at the number five. I want to be at the number six. So I can jump up one more. Oh, there you go. 
and that'll take me to six. So altogether, Mr. Robert, I jumped back 50 and 10 more, but then I added one of those back to get back to the number six. So I jumped 50 plus 10, which is 60, but then I jumped one less than that. So I also jumped 59. There you go. So Mr. So Robert, thinking back to our number sentence now, Goody ate 59 pieces of food. I love how even though our strategies were a little different, we still had the same answer in the end. That's a thanks great thing about math. Thanks for helping me solve that. You're welcome. Oof, Mr. Robert, thanks for helping me solve that problem. You're welcome. Mr. Stack, I cannot believe how fast April passed and it's already May. And when I think about May, and I think about May last uh, year at this time, um, a lot of our Muslim friends were celebrating Ramadan. Oh, that's last right. Year. Ramadan began on May 6th, and this year it began on April 23rd. And Ramadan is a time of the year. It's the holy month of the year in the Islamic calendar. And it's a time of the year where Muslim families spend the day praying and reflecting. Mm -hmm. And during the day, a lot of uh, adults or older kids do something called fasting, where they don't eat during the day. Right. And when the sun goes down at night, they have a meal called iftar. And the first thing that they do when they break their fast at the beginning of iftar is a lot of families will have a date. Ooh, yum. And I've heard some kids say that they have dates with milk or sometimes they have it with water. But a date is a round, soft, sweet fruit. Have you ever had a date? Mr. I Scott. have had a date. Yeah, actually, Mr. Robert, I'm so happy that you brought this up. Um, I had a student last year who during iftar would sometimes bring over treats uh, for my family and I, which was really thoughtful and always really filled my bucket. So, um, and I'm so happy you brought this up because I actually have a story problem for us to solve today that involves some ideas from Ramadan. Do you think right. you're up for another problem? I'm up for another problem. I can always count on you for that. Okay, Mr. Robert. So I have two students here. Um, I have Hassan and I have Omar. Now, Hassan and Omar are breaking the fast and they are having iftar. During their iftar, they're having dates. Um, now, here's the thing, Mr. Robert. These two kids decided that they wanted to cut their dates up into some equal pieces. They didn't want to cut them up into different sized pieces. They wanted to cut them up into equal sized pieces. Okay. But each kid decided to cut their dates up into different sized equal pieces. So I've got Hassan, and he cut his date into some equal sized pieces. Okay. And then he ate some of those pieces. And I've got Omar, and he also cut his date into some equal sized pieces. And he also decided to eat some of those pieces. Okay. So, Mr. Robert, the reason that I left these question marks here is anytime I'm solving a story problem, I really like to think and make sure I understand what's happening in the story. So, I know so far I've got two characters. I've got Hassan, I've got Omar. They're eating dates for Iftar, or as yeah. part of Iftar, and they both decided to cut them up into equal pieces. Are you ready to find out how many equal pieces each person cut them into? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. So Hassan decided that he wanted to cut his date into, oops, six equal size pieces. Okay. Yep. And he ate three of those pieces. What does that look like? Hmm. That's a really good question, Mr. Robert. So I know dates are kind of a little more ovular, but I decided to draw them as a circle up here. So here's Hassan's date. Now, Hassan took his date and he cut it into six equal pieces. Okay. So here's his date. He's cut it up into six equal pieces. Yeah. Now, he decided that he was going to eat three of those pieces. There's one, two, and three of those pieces. Now, Mr. Robert, as I look at these dates, there's a really special name that we have for each of these slices. I've got my whole date here, and I've cut it into six equal pieces. In other words, I've cut it into six. And as I look at the number of six 
that Hassan has eaten, Hassan has eaten one sixth, two sixths, three sixths of his date. So I'm going to put Hassan's eaten three sixths of his date. Okay, that makes sense. Sure. So now let's look at Omar and figure out how much he's eaten. So Omar cut his date into two equal sized pieces and he ate one of okay. those pieces. So Omar decided to make some bigger slices. He cut his right down the middle and he ate this entire piece right here. Now, Mr. Robert, when I look at this date here, he's cut it into two equal pieces. I'm going to put that here as my denominator. And he ate one of the pieces. So, Mr. Robert, now that we've cut these dates up, we've talked about how much each student has eaten. We need to figure out a problem here because I haven't posed the question for you yet. You did say there was a problem. Our problem that we're trying to solve is who ate more of their date? because they have different fractions. Hassan ate three-sixths of his date, but Omar ate one-half. So, Mr. Robert, when you look at this, which student ate more of the date? Well, that's kind of a tricky question because Hassan ate three pieces and mm -hmm. Omar ate one piece. That's right. And so I might think that three is more than one, and I might think Hassan ate more. But when I look at your picture, and it looks like, Hassan's three equal pieces is the same as Omar's one equal piece of his. You're exactly right, Mr. Robert. Even though each of these boys has cut their date into different numbered pieces, Hassan just cut his a little bit smaller. They still ate the total, they still ate the same amount of each whole date. So even though these fractions are a little bit different, they still equal the same amount. And we call these equivalent fractions. Equivalent meaning they're worth the same amount of the whole. So the correct answer to this problem, who ate more of their date? It's kind of a trick question. They actually ate the same amount. Thanks for helping me solve this problem, Mr. Robert. You're welcome, Mr. Stack. All right, Mr. Robert, time for the last part of our lesson. Are you ready? I'm ready for a good math game. Good. So um, I thought it'd be a lot of fun if we taught the viewers how to play the game Don't Break the Bank. You think you can help me with that? Would love to. Awesome. Um, so to play this game, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a dice or Mr. Robert is going to show you how to play with a deck of cards. Um, and Mr. Robert, do you have the full deck with you or did you change it a little bit? The only cards that I have in my deck are the aces, which are the same as a one and the twos, threes, fours, fives, and sixes. So the Perfect. numbers in my deck are the same numbers that are on your die. Cool, thank you. Um, you're going to need a game board and you can set that up by drawing a three by three array here. So nine total squares and one big space at the bottom for your sum. Um, and you're going to need something to write with. So if you got all of those things, you're ready to play. Now, Mr. Robert, we started a game between the set or between the the parts of this video um and so mr robert and i are going to show you how to continue or how to play this game but we're going to have a couple of our blanks already filled in so here's the game board that i have so far and mr robert do you want to show yours too i have this so far perfect all right so the purpose of this game is we're going to be adding three three digit numbers and we want to get as close to 1000 as we can get if you land on 1,000, you've gotten the best score you can get in the whole game. But if you get anything larger than 1,000 or greater than 1,000, you're out of luck. You've broken the bank. So Don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. All right, Mr. Robert, why don't we pick up where we left off? All right. Um, I pulled a six, and I'm going to take that six, and I'm going to put it in the tens place right there. Looks good to me. And I noticed, Mr. Robert, you've got six tens plus six tens. So you're going to be doing some regrouping. And you'll be moving a bundle of tens to the hundreds place. I see what you're up to. <laughs> All right. I rolled a six. And I'm going to put that six in the ones place. So my game board looks like this now. All right. Um, I got a five. 
And I am going to put that five. Uh, I'm going to put it here in the tens place. Mm. So right now I've got 17 tens. So right now I've got a seven here. Um, and then I've got another hundred over here because I'm bundling that hundred over here um, from the 17 tens. So I can't get anything bigger than I don't want anything bigger than a two here. Right. That makes sense. All right. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. Um, and I rolled a four and I'm going to put that four. Hmm, why don't we put that four over here in the ones column? So I've got six ones plus four ones. All right. So you're going to be regrouping as well. I am going to be doing some regrouping. Definitely in your ones column. I got a four and um, I cannot put the four in the hundred spot. That would break the bank. I would be over a thousand. So I can only put the four in one of my um, ones place. So I'll put it right there and I've completed the number 364 in the middle. Looks good. All right, Mr. Robert. I rolled a four and I think I'm going to put that four. I'm going to put it over here in the ones column. So now I've finished the ones place for all three of my three digit numbers. So you could add that up right now, couldn't you? I could actually. Yeah. Why don't we do it? So six plus four. I know that makes 10. And I've got four more ones. Now, I can't put 14 in my ones column. I've got to bundle up 10 of those ones and move them to the tens place. So I'm going to move those up here. So you actually have a one also in that column. I do. It's going to get really tricky, but we'll see oh, what happens. Um, I wanted it to. I got okay. it. There you go. All right. So um, I'm putting that two over there. So. Already, um, theoretically, I have a nine here. Mm -hmm. But I'm wait, I'm going to wait to add that up since I have some regrouping to do. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. But right, it Mr. looks Robert. like I've got 970 something already. All right. Let's see if I can catch keep up to you, Mister. Keep that in mind. <laughs> I rolled a three. I think I'm going to put that in my hundreds place. So I've completed two numbers. I've got 326 and 464. So I'm going to need, hmm, I'm going to try not to regroup here. That's actually, that's not really going to be possible for me. Hopefully I get a two or even a one would work over here in this hundreds place here. Yeah. All right. I got a five. And uh, I only have one places open right now. So I'm going to put that five right there. And I've completed 265 at the top. Looks good. Okay, Mr. Robert, this is getting really interesting. Um, I rolled a five and I'm going to have to put that in my tens place. Otherwise, I'm going to break the bank here. So here's what I'm at. All I'm right. I have a low roll for this next hundreds place here. We'll find out. And my last number, I got a two. So I will put that two here in the ones place. Five plus four is nine plus two is 11. I can't put 11 ones down here, so I'm going to take that 110 and put it up here in the tens place. I'll bundle that up. That leaves a one there. 110 plus six tens plus six tens plus five tens is 18 tens. So I'm going to put eight of the tens here and bundle up the other 10 tens and put those 10 tens or 100 over here in that column. 100 plus 200 plus 300 plus 300 is 900. So I've got 981 points. Oh my goodness, Mr. Robert. What a great score. Nice work. Not bad. Um, now, really quickly, I was doing a little addition while you were talking about your score. And I wanted to figure out what number I need my hundreds place here. So I've got three. I've got my one ten that's been rebundled here. So I've got 10 plus two tens. It's going to be three tens, nine tens, 14 tens. I don't want 14 tens. So I left the four from those tens and moved that bundle of 10 tens to the hundreds place. Now I've got 100 plus 300 is 400 plus another four will be eight. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed, Mr. Robert. The only thing that's not going to break the bank is a one. Is a one. Good luck, Mr. Stack. Uh, uh, keep your fingers crossed for me, everybody. Uh, no luck today. I should have got three my toes as well. I, only I did got a three. I appreciate it. I felt all the luck, Mr. Robert, but it just wasn't quite enough. So I have, oh goodness. 
I've got 11 hundreds, which is the same as 1,100. So I got 1,144, and I blew the bank wide open. You did. Oh, man. Well, good game, Mr. Robert. Good game, Mr. Stack. Um, and good game to all of you who played with us. We really hope you enjoy this game. Thank you for being with us for our lessons today. We hope that you enjoyed them, and we hope that you're staying safe and healthy, and we hope to see you real soon. But for now, we hope that you're being safe and healthy at home. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.